Game of Thrones is back, Game of Thrones is back, Game of Thrones is back, Game of Thrones is back. And we're going to the Eerie where my boy Sweet Robin lives. Well, it looks like the Boltons did some remodeling and finally put out that fire that's been going on for a few years. Ooh, Pentos, we haven't seen that since the first episode. I'm sure the graphics guy that spent countless hours on that is happy about that. Ah, Cersei going to see Maggie the Frog, a flashback. Not to be shallow, but why is Cersei's friend prettier than Cersei? That's kind of backwards. Wow, and Maggie the Frog actually looks pretty good. I was not expecting that. Wow, she cut deep. That was completely unnecessary. They always do that in movies. Honestly, you could have just pricked your thumb. I'm impressed that the dialogue is really similar to the books, though weirdly they've added four kids to Robert. I guess 20 is easier to say than 16. Sadly, we do not get to see Cersei push anyone down a well. Ah, so they've cut the scene where Cersei discovers Tywin's body. She doesn't know that he loves whores. By the way, where the hell is Tommen? Shouldn't he be at his grandpa's funeral? Sleeveless at a funeral, eh? Okay. I guess Tywin's body smells fine. That's too bad. I wonder what they're thinking about here. Should we have sex? I mean, it's a dead family member. We should have sex, right? So, Jaime is the paranoid one in this scene. That's pretty weird. And Cersei figures out that Jaime let Tyrion free? Shouldn't she be strangling him? So Tyrion's been in this box for, what, weeks at sea? Now he tells us that he shoves his shit out the holes, but how did he pee? He should have massive, massive diaper rash and smell really bad. So they're at Illyrio's house, but no Illyrio. I guess they couldn't get the actor back. And we're treated to this vomit scene for some reason. Great addition. I'm so glad they've cut Lady Stoneheart and Quentin and Ariana and young Griff and Euron and Victarion. Now this seems like the worst way to get a statue off of the top of a pyramid. They had to cut down all those trees and build all that scaffolding. It seemed really dangerous too. If it were me, I would have shaved the metal off piece by piece. Ooh, a scene with stalwart shield, or the equivalent. Is it me or was she humming We Three Kings? Ah, so the Sons of the Harpy are going to be an actual, real, organized institution. I mean, I like the masks and all, but I also really liked the mystery of whether or not they were an actual institution or just some sort of abstract movement. I mean, after all, they are a metaphor for terrorism and how difficult it is to root it out. Now, it's said that Unsullied don't feel fear, but this guy looks pretty damn scared. So it seems we have no Resnak or Skahas, but we've got this guy. Missandei and Grey Worm, Grey Worm and Missandei. They're gonna totally have some hot, not sex. And we're back at Castle Black. Hey, look, it's Ghost at the bottom of the screen. Look, Sam and Gilly, you guys are still here. I wonder if you guys are gonna leave. Ooh, Melisandre. Is it me or is she not looking so red? Is it the blue pop filter? Epic scene, but honestly, the worst place for a meeting. So Davos is at Castle Black. Well, I guess I can't complain. I love me some Davos. Sweet Robin! Sweet Robin! First of all, what? Sweet Robin is fighting? What? This scene would have given him about 175 seizures. Well, that strike wasn't so bad. I would say my boy Sweet Robin is doing pretty well. Nice block! Another good defensive move. You are way ahead of Sam Tarly. These Sansa scenes make no sense to me at all. They're leaving the Vale? Then what was the whole point of winning over the Lord's Declarant? So Brienne is sharpening a Valerian steel sword in this scene. You can stop that, Brienne. It's already sharp. I have no idea where they're going to go with this Brienne story. No brave companions, no nimble dick, no crackclaw point, no Randall Tarly, no Heil Hunt, no Rorgan Biter, no Brotherhood Without Banners, no Lady Stoneheart. I mean, what's she going to do with herself? Man, Sansa has taken a complete 180 in her personality. So Loras is not a Kingsguard. It's actually really hard to imagine Loras without this persona. He's one of the most knightly characters we have in the story. Lancel is back and he's frickin' buff. I had to look this up. It's actually the same actor from season one. I guess the producers couldn't ask him to fast and get all anorexic. I'm oddly really disappointed that we won't get to meet Gatehouse Amy. So we cut over to Loras and him and his new fling are talking about Dorne. He actually says visiting Dorne would be pretty nice. This never sat with me well, nor his flirting with Oberyn last season. Dornish and Reachman hate each other, and Oberyn crippled Loras's brother, so he should hate Dorn. So this scene happened. Oh, hey sis. Don't mind us. I'm just naked. Don't mind this wet spot. 
I'm very curious with where they're going with Varys. With no young Griff in this story, it seems Varys is being sincere when he says he backs Danny. So I guess that would mean his attempted murder of Danny in Season 1 was just a mummer's farce to try to get Drogo to invade Westeros. Varys also seems very sincere when he says he cares about the realm, which is interesting for a guy that tortures children. So Hisdar and Dario chatting semi-cordially. Crazy. Is that a giant harpy behind them? Didn't they go through all of that effort getting the giant harpy off the pyramid? Why is that one still up? Wow, so slavery's been eliminated in Yunkai. TV Daenerys is doing a lot better than book Daenerys. I really love this scene where Dario takes out his dagger. In a very subtle way, he's saying, Should I fucking kill this guy? It's very dark and very Dario. And then the awesomeness of that scene is undone by the very next scene where Dario agrees with his Dar. And we get this crazy scene where Dario tells his backstory. Dario was a slave and a pit fighter? I mean, I guess that would explain why he fights with both a Mira Stiletto and a Dothraki Eric, but he has zero tattoos. I guess they've given Dario this backstory because they've merged his character with Strong Belwas. So Dario encourages Danny to show her dragons. Yes, he does this in the book, but in the book they're fighting Yun Kai as well. Right now, Danny is only fighting the Sons of the Harpy. You can't use nuclear weapons against domestic terrorists. Danny's dragons have gotten big. Now, Danny never gets this scared of her dragons in the book, but I think it works. Riders can only ride one dragon. It does make me really wonder who the other two mounts are going to be, especially when there's no Quentin and no Victarion. Now, I wonder what they're going to do with Mance. Mance and Stannis' incredibly intricate conspiracy is one of my favorite aspects of A Dance with Dragons. Jon's story seems to follow the book still somewhat, so I wonder if any of the conspiracy is going to make it. Mance seems awfully earnest in this scene. And if he is secretly working with Stannis, I don't know why they'd send in Jon Snow to talk to him. Bend the knee and I'll promise you mercy. When did Stannis get so nice? Mance attacks the Seven Kingdoms and he can get mercy? That publicly makes Stannis look pretty damn soft. Whoa, Shireen is watching Mance get burned alive? Well, I guess Ned forced Bran to watch an execution. And Jon kills Mance, but not for the right reasons. We have no mention of Mance breaking his Night's Watch vows. Well, episode one has taken us almost completely off book. We'll see you guys in episode two.